independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. So what do you think? Will you show up at your trial any day? I'd love to go. Wouldn't that be great? So Wouldn't that be beautiful? Go? I don't know. I'd sort of love to sit right in the front row and stare at their corrupt faces. I'd love to do it. So why not? Can I don't know. Don't you? don't keep talking because I may. You may convince me to do it. Do you think Simple only would want you there? I think oh. they might have a problem. President. I think they might. And by the way, I think I think they've I think they've done a really good job. And I think the other side has so lied. I watched the lies from Adam Schiff. He'll stand. He'll look at a microphone. And he'll talk like he's so aggrieved. These two guys. These are major sleaze bags. Major sleaze bags. Everybody's a sleaze bag. Everybody's a sleaze bag. Everybody's bad. Yesterday, eh, it was a lot of nothing, right? I mean, you know what? Again, it, it's about the battle that's going on. Great way to raise money, right? Cipollone and Nadler went at it. So far, I'm sad to say, I see a lot of senators voting for a cover up, voting to deny witnesses. An absolutely indefensible vote. Obviously, a treacherous vote against an honest consideration of the evidence of the, against the president, a vote against an honest trial, a vote against the United States. Yeah, a vote against the United States. So you're voting against the United States. Pat Cipollone, one of the White House counsel. Mr. Nadler came up here and made false allegations against our team. He made false allegations against all of you. He accused you of a cover-up. He's been making false allegations against the president. The only one who should be embarrassed, Mr. Nadler, is you for the way you've addressed this body. And then finally, Dad steps in. I think it is appropriate at this point for me to admonish both the House managers and the President's counsel in equal terms to remember that they are addressing the world's greatest deliberative body. One reason it has earned that title is because its members avoid speaking in a manner and using language that is not conducive to civil discourse. Yeah. Translation. Stop being jerks. Stop this. You wasn't done. In the 1905 Swain trial, a senator objected when one of the managers used the word pettifogging, and the presiding officer said the word ought not to have been used. I don't think we need to aspire to that high a standard, but I do think those uh, addressing the Senate should remember where they are. Yeah. Pettifogging, essentially, undue emphasis on petty details, right? Because what you're trying to do, it's, and this is politics 101, I'm going to say a lot and circle around, use big words, use accusations, uh, use falsities. I'm going to I'm going to do all kinds of things. And at the end of it, you're going to be like, eh, you ever eaten a meal? And at the end of it, you're like, nee. that's kind of what happened yesterday. So what did they agree on? Right. As they move forward. And I'm not going to spend all day because the reality is, is I talked to probably 50 people yesterday and out of that they'll say i'll listen to some news but i won't watch it because everybody essentially had made up their mind and and guess what most people i talk to feel that either yeah trump did something but does it rise to this level or trump didn't do anything and that the other side is everybody feels like they can't trust each other right I mean, we're so right now tribal and split. Nobody believes anything anybody says. Nobody does. So they adopted the rules, and it's good to see the rules were adopted. I was like, oh, I hope the rules get adopted, and they did. So congratulations to the rules. So first of all, there were 11 amendments, basically party line, blown out, uh, you know, as far as like things that they wanted to put in there. But it was a party line vote. And so this is what's going to happen. All right. Opening arguments begin today, throughout the day and tomorrow. And as you guys are seeing, it's just, it's going on and this is, it, but it's not going to go on forever. Both sides given 24 hours over three days to argue the case. After that, you get 16 hours to ask questions. Right? That's what the senators are going to have 16 hours to ask questions to the two panels. At that time, they will then have the opportunity to vote. So going to go through all this rigor and more, right? And once they get through that, so everybody will have the chance to make their case, right, over three days. Then, 
16 hours of the senators then asking for questions. Then they'll all talk amongst themselves, huddle up, and decide if they would like more documents and witnesses after that. It's in the weeds, right? It's in At the end of the day, this is all in the weeds, and you sit back and you say to yourself, where's the cliff notes? I watched enough yesterday to realize it, it, it is. Uh, I mean, you know, I talked to a couple people yesterday. We text back and forth uh, before they went in because you have to give up your phone. There's no electronics. I mean, there is. it is just hours of minutia. For people who have already made up their mind, too. That's the other thing. For people who have already made up their mind, right? And the thought process, too, is like, okay, if we're going to have witnesses, we're going to trade you, Bolton, for Biden. That's reciprocity, right, that the the Republicans are going to ask for. So you want something, you want us to give you something, we'll give you something, and in doing that, we're going to expect something back, which we have every right to do, and we're going to take this. And people are thinking long and hard. Is that something they want? Here we are. It's moving forward. At the end of the day, I don't think anything's going to change. I don't think anybody's mind's going to be changed because I think at the end of the day, people have already made up their mind and they have everything to do outside of watching this. People say, well, why isn't this a bigger deal for the American people? I said, well, because we're so divided. We're so wrapped up in the red and the blue, right? We identify with that. It's got very little to do with all of the other stuff that you would, you know, uh, that you would think, okay, this is vitally important. This is the third time this happened in history. We're getting a firsthand look at history. But what we're getting a firsthand look at is pettiness and childishness and a disdain for each other's team. And that's not what our founding fathers wanted. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. With all of that going on, we have this coronavirus thing. How bad is the coronavirus? Where is it? Like all of this stuff, what's happening? Oh my goodness me, we got to be freaking out. We've got our first case here. Should we be worried? Do you guys remember the Ebola virus? It's about three, four years ago, right? That was like the hot thing because then we had some doctors that were over there. Some people got sick. And then we got a person who actually got it here, right? So we brought a couple people here that were part of the help i think it was the congo and then when we got him here one of the aid workers who was sick transmitted somehow the ebola to another person it was just but people were freaking out oh my god it's just and now we've got a person that is in the hospital and oh my god they're keeping him in isolation and they're going to do that at least for the next 48 hours but they're describing his condition as satisfactory uh, they're also monitoring all healthcare workers and any other patients that he came in contact with yeah and the way that they're doing stuff and they're screening now is, is is via the airport and where you come from in China in a certain region. Right now, they've been doing screenings at three different airports throughout the United States. They're going to expand that to five as soon as they can. So that includes Atlanta as well. In addition to that, any person traveling from Wuhan, China, that wishes to enter the United States has to go through one of those five designated airports where they're doing screening. Yeah, so... What does it mean? Nobody's going to get it, right? You know, it's, I don't think anybody's going to get this thing. I don't think we have to, to, you know, I mean, China has nine deaths and 440 cases. Uh, it can, they're, 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 they're trying to trace it back and they think it, they caught it at a, at a, like a fish market, like a meat market. And they're trying to figure out exactly what it is and, and what the commonalities are between other viruses and all of that stuff. But I, you know, yesterday's like people are, oh my God, oh my God. It's, you know, it's like SARS. You guys remember SARS too? Like the world was going to die because of SARS. Like this is it. We're waiting for the next influenza outbreak that's going to wipe out the world. You go back and you see the great influenza outbreak after World War II and you got, I mean, World War One. you got to think about all of the stuff that took place there. Modern medicine's a little bit better than that. We haven't emerged from the dark time of World War One or World War Two or World War Three. But people freak, oh, jeez, this is going to happen. Ah, settle down. 
323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. Love hearing from every single one of you. Wounded Paw, an amazing organization. Yesterday, here in, uh, or two days ago here in, in Phoenix, there was a mother who did the unthinkable to three of her children, and it was awful. And they, the first responders that were there, the, the paramedics and the fire department, couldn't save the kids and because of the trauma that they suffered, they were all dismissed and, and, and told to go home, not even to go back to the station, to just to go back and to, to take a few days off to, to seeing this thing. And when I went to figure stuff out, when I was talking to Wounded Paul, like what exactly it is you guys do, they just showed me it's, it's not only our veterans, but it is our first responders and their families who oftentimes need something there. And that's something in many cases is our furry best friends. They, they rescue dogs, shelter dogs, and take them from shelter dogs to service dogs. And sometimes it's just about comforting, and other times it's other things, including you know veterans that have been injured. But their motto is to save a pause, to save a life, and that is so real. They need your help, and you can give through the gift of a vehicle. It is simple and easy, amazing tax-deductible gift. Uh, doesn't matter if it runs, rocks, flies, floats, whatever it is, they'll take it. On top of that, you can also donate cash, but check out the works they're doing. It is amazing. WoundedPawProject.org, WoundedPawProject.org, or call 844-678-4PAW, 844-678-4729, or WoundedPawProject.org. Chad Benson Show. Check out our Chad Benson Show Facebook page where you can hang out or hang your grievances out to dry. This is Chad Benson. In an interview for a new documentary about her life, Hillary Clinton slams Bernie Sanders, saying that through all his years in Congress, he got nothing done. When asked about supporting Sanders if he won the nomination, she said she wasn't going there yet. But Clinton attempted to walk that back later, tweeting she would do whatever she could to support the Democratic nominee. Ah. <sighs> Don't walk it back, right? Like, why? Why walk it back? It's exactly what it is. You, 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 you got nothing to worry about, right? That's the way you feel. Absolutely, I bet that's the way you feel. And let me tell you something. I think she's right. I don't think a lot of people do like Bernie. And I think Bernie plays to win in ways that I think frustrate a lot of people. Very similar to Trump in that way. Very similar to Trump. And it's very interesting to to watch because it's not just her, man. He and Biden are going at it. And Bernie's fans, Bernie's supporters are, oh, my God. They, 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 you say one thing, they will destroy you. Like she was getting destroyed yesterday about all of it. And I thought it was funny. Right? She just she she said what she said. And I don't don't walk it back. Right? You got nothing to lose. You got, you're, you you got no skin in this game anymore. Be honest. That's the beauty of politics. When you leave politics, you get to do something you haven't been able to do for years, which is be honest. Back in Washington, Sanders tried to brush off Clinton's criticism. Look, uh, right now today I am dealing with impeachment. Meanwhile, two people actually in the race, Sanders and former Vice President Joe Biden, are once again feuding. Yeah, they're feuding. They're they're arguing amongst themselves over something that was posted and and doctored videos and stuff like that. And it is, uh, you know, it only takes a second. Oh, yeah, totally sorry. But Sanders had apologized to the former vice president after one of his supporters called Biden corrupt in an op-ed circulated by the Sanders campaign. I'm sorry that that uh, op-ed appeared to me. make an apology? I accept his apology, and I accept it for what it was. That seemed to end it. Ah, seemed to end it. Remember that. Seemed to end it. But it was too late. And the video, there was a video going around that was totally just chopped up to the right eight or ten seconds. And once you do something like that, it, you know, away it goes. When I, I argued that we should freeze federal spending, I meant Social Security as well. Yeah, so that's what they were flying around. Bernie's people. 
And everybody else on the campaign trail is like, maybe we shouldn't fight amongst ourselves. It, it, you no, know, no. It's They're all taking a page from Trump, which is you got to win the nomination before you can be president of the United States. And to do that, you got to come hard. And that's exactly what they're doing. And it is hilarious, right? Because I think she was spot on. I think she was just, I think she was right. I don't think a lot of people do like Bernie. And I try to talk, remind everybody, Bernie is a not a Democrat. He's an independent that caucuses with the Democrats. Go look at a lot of their records, right? Not just him, but a lot of them. They don't get a lot done. They try to co-sponsor bills. They try to do certain things, but very, very few things get done. Oh, yeah, I never even thought of that. No, most people don't. I mean, go look at a lot of the bills. Who gets what done? And there's a lot of bills that get passed that we don't know anything about, right? You know, for all the talk of, oh, you know, all these bills that they passed or tried to pass, there was like 270 bipartisan bills that passed through the House to Congress. And we just don't hear about them because they're not sexy, right? In this world that we live in, whether it's impeachment or whatever it is, it's sexy. And that's, you know, we need sexy, sex sells. And that includes, like, simple stuff. Something Keep it simple, stupid for the people. And if it's going to be something really uber complicated and gets deep into the weeds, people are like, ah, because we have the attention span of a gnat. Ooh, piece of candy. Walking. Ooh, piece of candy. Look over there. Ooh, piece of candy. What's up? Ooh, piece of candy. That's us. Cliff Notes version. And if you could make it the Cliff Notes version of the Cliff Notes and just tell me, like, it's basically what we want to do is we want to get a book and the book is War and Peace. And we're going to just try to hopefully go to the last two or three pages to find out how the thing ends. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the programs as well. Uh, more on impeachment. AOC, wait till you hear what she has to say. Wow. Wow. This should scare people. This should. Chad Benson show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Just over half of Americans say they believe the Senate should vote to convict and remove President Trump from office. Take a look at this. According to the latest CNN SSRS poll, 51 percent believe Trump should be convicted and removed from office by the Senate. Forty five percent say he should not. Sixty nine percent say that the Senate impeachment trial should include testimony from new witnesses. Ooh. Really? Meek. So CNN's poll had CNN's poll had that CNN. No way. CNN. It's like going to a Fox poll. No way. Fox said he shouldn't be (laughs) just so stupid. Here's the thing. Let me tell you what sells in life. Drama, sex, things that you can. There's an emotion tied to it. Right. A rational voice. In a storm of chaos. Isn't really going to have anybody paying attention to it because everybody else is too busy going, look at the chaos and and freaking out. We're the exhausted majority. I say that all the time. Seventy percent of Americans, they lean a little bit right, a little bit left, but they're not insane. That 15 percent, though. Seven and a half on each side. Have the bully pulpit. They scream and they yell. And the problem is, is 60% of that 70% will turn and look. Oh. Because it's the great car accident, right? It's the whiplash. Got to look and see what's going on over there. 
Because it, it does. Look, I, I can come on and scream all day about insanity. You know, we can say, oh, God, oh my God. It's, it's, it doesn't do anything. Right? And the problem with us is we need more parties than we have right now. That's the other thing. We've got parties within parties, except for the fact that we can only vote really for two parties. Right? So inside of the Republican Party, you have conservatives. Right? You have moderates and certain libertarians. On the other side, you have moderates, some more libertarians, old school Democrats, and then progressives, right? The socialist side. But at the end of the day, Bernie's not running as an independent. Even though he's an independent, he runs as a Democrat. How how do we bring it together? That's just it. We're never going to bring everybody together because no matter what happens, you're going to have people out there that are going to be on the extremes that will always get all of the time they need because television, radio, and magazines, that's what sells, right? Somebody coming out going, look, you know what? We're not going to get everything we need and want. We're going to have to give some stuff up. Right. We're going to have to. And, and, and no matter what we do, it's not going to make everybody happy. And some people are going to feel left out and some people are going to feel. I mean, it doesn't matter. Right. But you do have a problem in both parties right now, which is this huge gap that is 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 starting to pull the parties away from themselves inside. So you're seeing regular Democrats get pulled away. To the centrist like area, everybody's like, "Oh, you're a moderate." Why? Because you're pro-choice and you're and and you're good with marriage equality, but because you're not for crazy Marxism and free jobs and free everything, somehow that you're no longer a good, you know, soldier in the Democratic Army. And on the other side, right, Republicans, you you, you could be fine with marriage equality and okay with uh, with with you know legalizing marijuana, but because of that, you're not a good person anymore. And it, it's it's stupid. It is, but you do have a problem. And right now, here's a perfect example of how this whole thing differs, right? This is AOC who's campaigning with Bernie. You listen to this, and I will tell you this for as as a, as a person who lived through the Cold War, as a person who got to see up close and personal what the Eastern Bloc look like, having played games in East Germany when I was a kid. East Germany, because there was a West Germany. And this is straight crazy. Like, uh, what are you talking about? Right? Like, this, this is what you really think? This is not to say that charity is wrong. Right. But also it's important in who we give to. Mm -hmm. If you're a billionaire and you want to do good, then I think what you need to do is, first of all, change your business model. Bizarre. If Jeff Bezos yeah, wants right. to be a good person, he turned Amazon to a worker cooperative. Right. You know, <laughs> like, not what do I do with all of this money that I have created right. with this unjust system. Right. A worker cooperative? Right? Are you kidding me? Like, that's what he should do? That, that's it? Oh, it's not done. Usually if you're a billionaire, that means that you control a massive system. Mm. It means that you own oil supplies. Mm. It means that you control textiles. Mm. It means that you have a mm. massive labor force under your control. And to be ethical, if you're a billionaire today, the thing that you need to do is give up control mm. and power. So I don't want your money as much as we want your power. Mm. The people, not me. No, you. Everybody who, and this is the funny thing, and I always talk about this when it comes to socialism. When people say out there, oh, you guys are crazy when you talk about socialism and there's nobody out there that's really like that. Bernie's not like that. AOS, they're like that. They would love that. They would. They would love the kind of power that Maduro has, but more importantly, that Hugo Chavez has, because they believe they can do it better. They believe they can do it better. Everybody believes, but everybody who wants that kind of power never wants to live under that kind of power. It was always designed for pe by people who want to control the power. 
they have power too. That's why in the world of politics, money seeks out power and power seeks out money. Right? That's that's what happens. But a cooperative? I mean, some of this stuff, and she's just getting started, kids. I'm Joe Billionaire. I made widgets. I sold those widgets. I made mm-hmm. billions of dollars, you know, yeah. selling those widgets, making those widgets. Therefore, those billions of dollars are right. mine. Why am I the enemy? Well, you didn't make those widgets, did you? Mm. Because you employed mm. thousands of people and paid mm. them less than a living wage mm. to make those widgets for you. You didn't make those widgets. Mm. You sat on a couch while thousands of people were paid modern day slave wages Mm. and in some cases real slave, real modern day slavery. Are you kidding me? You didn't make those? You didn't take the risk? That's what people don't understand. People like her have never been in the real, the real world, right? Like, you know, she was a bartender for a little while. She went to school. And guess what, though? Go look at Bloomberg, right? We everybody points. Oh, Trump's a bit. Go look at Bloomberg. Look what he started with. Look how he started. Look where he. Oh, but he didn't make anything. He never did. Any, you're right. He came up with an idea. And then he went to a couch and he sat down and magically people appeared. Magically people showed up. Magically. That happened. And along the way, he enslaved them. Not employed them. Enslaved them made that money off off the backs of undocumented people. Mm -hmm. You made that money off of the backs of um, black and brown people being paid under a living wage. You made that money off of the backs of single mothers. And all of these people who are literally dying Mm -hmm. because they can't afford to live. Mm -hmm. And so no one ever makes a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. You take a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. And they soak it up. Oh, yeah, you're right. They are just stealing. That's all they're doing. They're stealing. They're stealing. That's it. No, government takes, right? If you make a widget and your widget sucks, it doesn't sell. You lose your money. You go out of business. If you make a widget and it does well, you employ people. And along the way from employing people, well, it's all slave labor, Chad. And it's all, and people are dying because you're slave. No, no, this is not, they're not the De Beers family out there, right? Mining, uh, you know, blood diamonds. It's never going to be good enough, but government takes, right? Government takes. When's the last time you went to your paycheck and saw the part where no taxes were taken out? No, they take them out. Do you give it to them voluntarily? No, they take them out. I love when they talk about revenue. This is, this is, I'm telling you guys, that's the stuff when people say it's not, you listen to that and tell me how this doesn't sound insane and Marxist. And I'm not here to, to villainize and to say billionaires are inherently morally mm. corrupt, but they are, <laughs> some <laughs> disagree with me, clearly. It's not, it's not to say that, it's to say that this system that we live in, life in capitalism, right. always ends in billionaires. And uh, that's why we have to fight for an advanced society. And, you know, for that, I am called a radical. I am called this every name in the book. No, you're called that because you're out there saying, well, you know, billionaires should give up everything, that they sit at home and do nothing. And by the way, it's not just after a while, billionaires won't be enough. The millionaires, right? And the millionaires are the people who, you know what, they made some decent money, quarter of a million dollars a year, worked their butts off 60, 70 hours a week, building up a small business, put money away, did okay for themselves. And all of a sudden, they're going to be the villains because along the way, because they're going to run out. And everybody is a victim. Everybody is a victim because there will always be more victims than victors. And that is an issue. That is a huge issue. Tell me right there. I'm not talking about the Joe Bidens of the world, right? The Bloombergs, the Pete Buttigieg. I'm talking about the people that see things and they don't want to change the system. They want to burn the system down and do something different. And guess what? It is growing out there. Well, maybe it's a good thing. Really? Show me where it's worked. Well, sweet. Sweden's not. Scandinavian model is not the model you think it is. They tried that model, by the way. And they lost everything. And then they're like, nope, can't do this. Show me. Show me. I'm waiting. 
323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. Car Shield. Love Car Shield. Why? Because I don't have to use it, but I have it. Haven't had to use it yet. I'm assuming at some point in time I'm going to have to use it. I've used it on my other car that I don't have anymore. And, man, the car show come through with me. You get 24-7 roadside assistance, a rental car for free while your car's in the shop, and the shop is the shop that you choose. They get them paid directly, so you don't have to front them any cash or anything. So maybe your car's a little newer, right? I was talking to my buddy yesterday. He, he bought his car newer, but he paid cash for it, so there was no warranty or anything that came with it. And he was like, ah, you know, and I said, dude, get car shield. Trust me. Ask, ask my buddy Lloyd. He didn't get it. I, jo- I just said, you should get it. He said, no, 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 no. Literally within a month, month and a half later, it's car. Pfft. I said, with CarShield, they covered that, man. It would cost you nothing but your deductible. They'll take care of whatever it is you need. Maybe your car's newer. You got electronic stuff in there. You want to make sure that's taken care of. Maybe you want everything taken care of. Doesn't matter. Whether your car's got 5,000, 150,000 miles on it, CarShield is there for you. Right now, you're going to save 10%. You go to CarShield.com. CarShield.com, use code Benson, or better yet, call them at 800-CAR-6000, 800-CAR-6000. When you do that, use my code Benson. Ask them all the questions you need about the plan that's right for you and the card that you have. 800-CAR-6000, code Benson, a deductible may apply. Chad Benson Show. Being antisocial sucks. Hang with Chad's friends on Facebook, The Chad Benson Show. And if you just need some alone time, head on over to Twitter at Chad Benson Show. Either way, we can't wait to meet the real you. I had a bad fall. I had to have surgery on my neck. And I found out that I have a, 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 a mild form of antisocial. It's um, parking too which is a form of Parkinson's. And it's not a death sentence by any stretch of the imagination, but it's like you have a good day, a good day, and then a really bad day. A year ago, next month, I was in a shocking state. Yeah. Ozzy Osbourne, Good Good Morning America, talking about stuff. Uh, He sounds a mess, but I always remind everybody, while he sounds a mess... That's what a lot of people from Birmingham sound like. Now, he is taking it a step further, but, yeah, you know, he's got, so he's got a, a, a form of Parkinson's, Good Day, Bad Day. He's got an album. I think he's doing collaboration with Elton John. I mean, he's doing some stuff. Uh, and, uh, you know, he wants to get out there and, and do his thing as best that he can. I want to see my people, you know. I miss them so much. What is it that you want people to know, Sharon? He's going to get back up there, and he's going to do what he loves to do. I know it. Will he do it a lot? That I don't know. Will he do it often? Again, don't know. I feel better now. I've owned up to the fact that I have a case of uh, Parkinson's. And I just hope they hang out in there for me because I need them. They're my heir, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Is somebody like that who's a hard rocker, hard charging, you know, person. I mean, you read the stories, you hear the stories. We were debating yesterday. It's like, okay, was he bit a bat's head off? And he that was kind of became his thing. And and it was just, you know, not the bat, but like a bird head. And it was always supposed to be fake. And it was just, it was. He's an interesting character, but there's issues there that that you can hear. And it's not just. The Parkinson side of stuff, you can hear the struggle in the way that he is talking, and that's sad. Speaking of sad, imagine being in a band and then told you got to audition. We're living on the- Harrison with the drummer Joey Kramer has sued the band, saying it was keeping him out after he got hurt last year. He was forced to re-audition for the job he'd had for 50 years, and he was told he didn't have enough energy to take the stage. Steven Tyler, Joe Perry, and the rest of the guys say not true. In a statement claiming they've asked him back several times, but Kramer says he hasn't been ready emotionally and physically. One big issue this weekend's Grammys where Aerosmith is performing. Kramer says he wants to play. The band now saying there's not enough time for him to rehearse so he can come, but he can't play. (laughs) So you can come, but you can't play. You can show up, but you can't play. At the Grammys. Grammys got all kinds of controversies going on, including the fact that their CEO has been ousted, and now she's filed a complaint. She's only been there for like six months. 
And it's it's crazy. This is going to get ugly with this. With just days to go before music's biggest night, new bombshell allegations are hitting the Grammys. The Recording Academy accused of tampering with nominations, voting, and even who gets to perform on that iconic stage. A new complaint to the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission filed by recently ousted Recording Academy CEO and President Deborah Dugan claims the Grammy voting process is a boys club. Oh, yeah. It was more than that, too, man. She, her complaint, she, she it, it, other people complained about her, apparently, but now it's, it's going to be a nasty lawsuit. There's going to be all kinds of stuff. And she was brought in to replace, quote, unquote, the boys club, and apparently the boys club didn't like it, but... From what I understand, a female filed a complaint against her. So this is going to be ugly. Six months she was there. Six months. Man. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. Check out the podcast, thechadshow.com. This is Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. We, on November 3rd, are coming, and we are large. <laughs> doesn't matter who, I mean, seriously, he they had a poll last month, a literal, actual poll. Who would you vote for, Trump or the Roomba, the, ro- the robot <laughs> vacuum? Yeah, sure. And the Roomba won. The Roomba won. The Roomba won. Yeah. So he's in, he's in deep trouble. I- uh, are you okay? Because you're breathing really hard. I feel like you're very excited. And by the way, like two weeks ago, you're like, nobody's going to be able to beat Trump. Nobody's going to be able to beat Trump. People today are like, oh, my God, Trump is, did you see all the polls? And I'm like, I don't know who's going to win. Again, we're so far away from that. We don't even know who's coming out the other side of the Democratic battle, right? We're in the middle of impeachment. Well, not even the middle. We're starting it in earnest today. Like, you know, getting it going. But, you know, we're still debating certain things, right? I mean, they're still trying to make it. We haven't decided if they're going to. Uh, it's going to be days before we find out if they're going to introduce new documents and witnesses and, and, and all of that stuff. You think a Roomba can beat him? Really? <laughs> but two weeks ago, wow, it's different then. It's crazy. It's nuts. Like, that's the craziness of 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 the world like one minute so oh, he, he can't be beat next minute it's like oh i think a, a pencil could beat him so silly people are cheering yeah we're so divided but we're not done there kids right we're not done there because then we have to talk about stuff right how it looks because it can't just be a democrat there's a look that has to go with it I kept saying Hillary got the most votes. We need to keep this in mind. Do not despair. The majority of the country thinks like we do by three million votes. And and what we should do actually in 2020, we shouldn't we shouldn't run one woman. We should run two women. The ticket, the vice president and president on the ticket will be two women. Let's just double down on this. Let's just double down. And, you know, and all the all the pundits will go, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, you can't do that. They'll never get elected now. And like, oh, yeah, I'll tell you right now. Every woman's going to vote <laughs> and every young person's going to vote. Really? And it's because they have breast and a hoo-ha has nothing to do with their capabilities. That's it. Is that, is that where we are? That is identity politics. That is identity politics. That's where we are. You know, Cory Booker, black, didn't resonate with the black vote, right, by the way. Didn't. Didn't resonate with anybody. His message was, just wasn't a good message, right? I care about competence and getting stuff done. I don't care about what you look like. I don't care about who you worship, and I don't care who you love. I care about competence 
and getting stuff done. I would like you to do it without chaos. But the reality is, uh, in this world, uh, it's, that doesn't happen anymore. 24-7 media, chaos sells, so chaos will be found and or kind of invented at times. Hey, here's a great idea. This person said that. Let's splash it everywhere so we can get this person to argue and fight. But they're concerned about the look of everything. No matter what, whoever the next nominee is for our party, they better have an authentic connection uh, to African-American communities and inspire, and I'll use this word very purposely, trust. Because the Democratic Party has done a lot of things, you know, mass incarceration is an example, that don't necessarily align with the interests of African-American communities. Yeah. That's true. I mean, Biden was on that there ticket. Remember the whole thing back in the day? You know, Clinton taking on crime, doing what he did. Mm. Kamala Harris, right? She was the AG of California. And the black community was not a fan of what took place there. And how tough she was in certain situations, especially with marijuana and things like that. And uh, look. so, yeah, I, that I do get. I just wonder, it's like, if you're if you're black, don't you feel used at times? And by the way, aren't you feeling used and now tossed away because there's a bigger voting block that's moved in, right? Still people of color, but bigger voting block. So maybe we can gravitate towards that, right? Because we're always going to have you. So if we always have you, what's my use of working hard to keep your vote if I know? If I know I can keep you. And not have to do anything, just promise you something with a little lip service and then wander away. Hmm. But it's always about a certain look and a way that it it becomes this identity politics. Again, I don't care if it's two trans people who are people of color, but they're competent. They can get a job done. They can work across the aisle. Not everything's going to be perfect. You're not going to blow smoke. We can just, you know, hey, you get it done, you get it done. Well, Chad, you shouldn't say it. No, but that's the reality of it. Everybody cares about a look. Everybody cares about certain things. Everybody, especially in the Democrat Party, is check this box and check this box and check this box. Right? Let's figure out what the competence is. Let's see if people can actually pull it off. Let's see if they can do the job presented to them. In such a way, because it's not just about the nuts and the bolts and the, you know, dotting the I's and crossing the T's. There's a sales job and there's certain things that go in it in the human side that you can't put a finger on. There's just certain things. Are people capable of doing that or is this only about checking boxes? I don't think we should have uh, two white men on the ticket anymore, not because there's not great talented, incredible white men, but I also believe that with the diversity of our party, the strength and leadership, having diverse teams are stronger teams. And so I hope that there's a diverse ticket. But why? What if the best bet was two diverse teams? I mean, two, two, two white men. What if the best ticket was two white men? Would you not want that because it doesn't check a box and because we have to check all the boxes? I think it's a fair question to ask. Again, I don't know what their best ticket is. I think there's a couple of tickets out there that if I'm Trump, I would be more worried about than others. And there's some out there that you can look and say, eh, you know. But I think it's a fair question to look around and go, okay, what do you think it is? What What is it you really want? You ask yourself, you sit down. Everybody should be a free agent after November. Free agent meaning... Parties and the people you vote for have to prove that they're worthy of being in office and that your vote is back up for grab. And what is it that you're going to do over the next two years, four years, or six years that we're going to want to keep you there again? What is it? Well, for Trump, win or lose, I mean, you know, I mean, he's out, you know, after, you know, so if he wins, he's got four more years. If he loses, it doesn't matter. For the new person, if they win, they got to prove it. How do you prove it? It's about showing up and doing the things you're supposed to do. It's hard in this day and age, right, to 
to go and to try to and the problem is is too often now we play to the extremes right we play to the extremes so we listen to the, to the extremes and try to make them happy when the exhausted majority the 60 to 70 percent of us who are just going about our lives pay attention to politics in particular the, but a little bit and we'll pay a little bit more attention during the big races right it's like the olympics we don't watch gymnastics but olympics come around we watch gymnastics so we'll pay attention to that. How do you get those people? Those are the people that you can bring together. Those are the people that want, uh, you know, a common sense approach. Right? We need to have empathy with immigration, but we can't be stupid. Right? We need to figure out how we give people choice in, in the medical side and health care of their life without saying we're going to take away your choice and 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 this is what you're going to be stuck with and also without you going bankrupt how do we approach things in a real way that reaches the mass that's what people need to be talking that's what they care about right not the insanity and the chaos that so many people who get the microphone and the 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 attendance i mean the the cameras and the attention what the average person is that's it. I think it's out there. And again, you're not going to make everybody happy. And there's going to always be 15 or 20 percent of the people in this country who are going to be pissed off at something. But you know what? Just do you. That's it. Just do you. Let them be pissed off. Just they they live to be pissed off. And it's both sides. Right. Right. That 7.5% on each side lives to be angry. They revel in it. That's what makes them happy is being pissed and angry. So don't try. You're never going to make them happy. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. Light streams to the holidays, kids. Holidays. They're past us. People are starting to wake up to the reality that they spent way too much money over the holidays. And that money is getting bigger <gasps> why because you put it all in your credit card and you're looking you're paying 18 20 plus percent interest rate that's the average 20 percent the average rate that's insane well consolidate those high interest credit card balances to a lower rate and save with lightstream it's so simple and easy there are no fees fixed rate right there's no prepayment penalty it is that simple it really is Rates as low as 5.95% APR with auto pay. And just for being my listener, you can also save big. You're going to get a special interest rate discount. So you're already getting a great interest rate discount. You're going to be saving yourself money. You're going to get that stress away. Go to lightstream.com slash Benson. That's L I G H T S T R E A M dot com slash Benson. And you will save big. Subject to credit approval. Rate includes 0.50% auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply. Offers subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash Benson for more information. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show, where independent a la carte thinkers have a seat at the table and a voice in the dialogue. I'll have what she's having. This is Chad Benson. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Now it's time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? Baseball Hall of Fame still trending. Derek Jeter got in, but s- somebody decided, nah. You're ninety nine point seven percent of baseball writers. So three hundred ninety six out of three hundred ninety seven ballots were cast for him, but there was one ballot who did not, and it just makes me laugh. Who didn't vote for him to get in? Larry Walker also got in, just over the threshold. Bonds. Did not, but I'm noticing now more and more they're picking up steam and they're getting closer and closer. But somebody said you shouldn't get in. 
Really? Is that person a person who's never watched sports? Has no idea? One of the best shortstops in the last, what, 50 years plus? Plus a leader on the field? (laughs) It's just amazing. Like, who gets to vote for this crap? Other stuff trending right now. More on impeachment. Ozzy Osbourne still trimmed. Terry Jones trending. He is one of the writers, directors, and charter members of Monty Python. Passed away at age 77. He had been struggling for the last few years with dementia. He directed Life of Brian and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, But he started to get worse and worse. So remember Monty Python, you had uh, him, Terry Jones, you had Michael Palin, Eric Idle, John Cleese, and Graham Chapman, and an American, a Yank, Terry Gilliam. They started in 1969, and uh, their Flying Circus uh, sketch show was hilarious, went on to make movies and, uh, and, and, and grabbed a lot of fame out of that. He passed away at age 77. You're moving over to Twitter, a little bit different on Twitter. Oh, my goodness. Adam Schiff rocks. Don't really think that. Terry Jones is up there. Hump Day. Yang Oprah. I think that's hilarious. Is that going to be the ticket? Oprah's not going to do it. Oprah, I'm telling you guys, people love that. Like, oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, Oprah would be. uh, No, no. Oprah's looked around and said to herself, I know Donald. May or may not like him. Right? Because, again, a lot of people talk smack, and then in real life, they're not as smack-talking, or they're not as hate-filled as everybody would like people to believe. But in saying that, she realizes. She has taken... She's seen what's happened to Donald's brand. Right? She's seen what's happened to his brand and his name. Oprah built a brand and name that is massive, and she did it from scratch, even though she she pays slave wages and is nothing but about slavery, according to AOC, that anybody's a billionaire, that's how they, and she sat on her couch, that's all she did, and that's it, she didn't do anything else, she didn't think outside the box, she just did that and then made people go make her money, but she's built a brand. Are you ready to have half the country... And and at this point, not even dislike your politics, because we can no longer compartmentalize and say, I don't like the politics, but I like the person. And we do that in our personal lives, and we do that with, with, with now public figures. Now it's, I just don't like you anymore. Is she ready for that? I don't know. I don't think I don't think most people are if they have a brand. You know, The Rock always jokes about it, but, man, you know what happens, Right? You're going to get to that position. And now it's at a point where you have to choose a side. It's almost like prison, right? you got to go get in the gang that's going to protect you the most if you're going to do this. And I don't think she wants any part of that. No part of that. And I don't blame her. I wouldn't want any part of that. To be torn apart and just, ugh, no. And, and, and 99% of the times you're torn apart not for your ideas, but for you as a person. And that's where they go to, because it's easier to do that than to try to say, hey, my ideas are better. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. This is the Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. The smartphone of Amazon founder Jeff Bezos was reportedly hacked in 2018. Britain's The Guardian newspaper says it's very likely that it was caused by an infected video file sent from the account of the Saudi crown prince. 
The paper says the hack may have been tied to the murder of Saudi dissident Jamal Khashoggi, who wrote for the Washington Post. Bezos owns that paper. The Guardian also reports the hack may have been linked to a U.S. tabloid publishing intimate details about Bezos' private life. The yeah. Saudi government calls the report, quote, mm. absurd. Mm. Totally absurd, except for the part now where the U.N. is saying, we need to probe this. What were you guys doing? I know. Saudi Arabia, it's we're as flabbergasted as you. Do you would even think about doing anything like this at all? Now, is it possible that somebody hacked from Saudi Arabia into the phone and that the royal family uh, had no idea? That is possible. It's highly unlikely, but it is possible. <laughs> they were trying to get, you know, a uh, look. They're, they're trying to get as much dirt on as much uh, as many people as possible and as much information. And, you know, so you put it together. So he owns the Washington Post. Khashoggi worked for the Washington Post. So the U.N.'s going to take a peek. Better watch out. Right? Because from what I understand from AOC, that he's going to come now and he's going to buy all your oil wells. <laughs> You guys didn't hear earlier she was talking about basically oil wells. That's that's all rich people do is just have oil wells. (laughs) It's like that's where it ends up at. You're like, what? Okay. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. They'll be battling it out today, throughout the day, throughout the night, throughout tomorrow, throughout the next day. You've got impeachment, uh, Trump, Davos today, doing what Trump does. Uh, just just saying things, you know, willy-nilly, as he tends to do. They asked him about Nadler. Gerald Nadler, I've known him a long time. He's a sleazebag. Everybody knows that. <laughs> Everybody knows that. I have to tell you guys this. You guys have known him. He's a sleazebag, right? He's an absolute slee. He Of all of the bags that I know, sleazebag. What about Lev Parnas? Oh, he's a con man. Okay. okay so Ready? Let me answer that one. True? I don't know him. Okay, other than know. he's... Uh, so like a groupie. He shows up at fundraisers. He's a con man. He's a groupie. He's a groupie con man. That's what he is. He shows up at fundraisers, gives money, gets in pictures. That's what happens. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows what sleaze bags look like. Just a bunch of sleaze bag. That's all it is. So they'll be battling it out. It's just so. Oh. Chad, this is history. The problem with this history is it feels very forced and show busy more than it does you go look at johnson right like you go look at that and okay that was very political as well right he got rid of the you know the secretary of war and there was a battle and that that very political because that's what this is at the end of the day this is all politics right this is all politics but i sit back and i laugh because as much as this is an important part of our history are both sides going to look back and and all of us in twenty like we do now with Clinton? We're like that was stupid, and today Trump's like, look, I didn't think he should be impeached, right? Like what he did was bad, like not that bad. I've done worse, but you know, it was just you know, no, I didn't think it was good, Dan, because they're asking about Ken Starr and the things he said. Because that was more of me being mad at the Republicans impeaching him. I don't think he should have been impeached. I felt bad for the guy. Still do. So now, what they're going to do over the next. 72 hours. So each side's going to have 24 hours to lay out their case, right? Essentially, they're going to lay out their cases. Then there's going to be like 16 hours of question and answer time with the senators. And then they'll decide if they want to have a vote to introduce more stuff, including witnesses and documents. Just fundamentally fair that any trial be a process by which we receive evidence. <laughs> what we are seeing, and for hours now, there has been basically a battle about whether that did happen. It is extraordinary that we would be debating whether a trial should involve the receipt of evidence. Um, if this is going to have any legitimacy, it will be a process by which we uncover, we discover, we discuss, we debate what happened. And the only way to know what happened is to receive the evidence and then we can determine whether it is relevant and then we can determine whether it is credible and there can be debates about that but there should not be an effort to obstruct the senate's ability to actually know what happened but that's what we're witnessing right now kamala harris right there and here's the thing 
I understand what she's saying, but the Republicans have laid out the argument, look, the, this isn't a situation here where we should be making the case for a hastily put together impeachment by the House. That's that's on them. They should have made that case plain and clear. They should have been the one that put the case out there that it was right there. There it all is. We shouldn't have to go back and re-examine and, and, and essentially re-put together the case and add more to it. They should have brought that to us with, here it is. This is what it is. This is what it looks like. What do you think of that? They haven't done that, and that's where we are. And this battle is going to continue for the coming days and the coming weeks. I don't know how long this is going to last. I was sitting there the other day. I I put it at, from the time we get into the first vote round, right, in the next coming days, which most likely Saturday, if they're going to work six days a week, Saturday, and if, you know, they say they are, but then, you know, ooh, we're going to work. So Saturday-ish, right? So I would put it from that following Monday, two weeks for everything, unless they're going to allow tons of witnesses and documents. And remember, the Democrats want Mulvaney, and they really want John Bolton. They really do. But are they prepared to see Bolton in exchange for the likes of Biden and a few others that may hurt them out on the campaign trail? Because there's always the thought from some of the Democrats I've talked to who work in campaigns that what could be exposed in Biden's place could really hurt him on the campaign trail. So... People are tossing around the whole thing. What should they or shouldn't they do? How do they go from here? Where do they go from here? Right? Because they want to scream, we want this, this, and this. But at some point in time, you just say, you know what? We can pretend we want this, this, and this. We could say it all day long. We know where this is going. But as long as we go out and act like we're fighting for that, we can then at the same time just turn around and say, we tried to do everything we could. And this is what happened. This is what happened. They said no. So not a lot we could do. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. Now, the coronavirus is not the virus where it gets a Lyme. Isn't that, what, is that Corona saying? Every time a, a Corona gets a Lyme, like an angel loses its wings. I don't know. Something stupid like that. But uh, there is a first person. In the United States of America that has gotten it. And he's in beautiful Seattle. They're keeping him in isolation. And they're going to do that at least for the next 48 hours. But they're describing his condition as satisfactory. Uh, They're also monitoring all healthcare workers and any other patients that he came in contact with. Yeah. So what are they going to do? And this is the big thing that they're talking about. Like how this thing plays itself out with... Because with a virus... And now that they know it can be transmitted from person to person, and they think it started at an animal market in a certain area in China, is how do we prevent the spread of it? What's it actually potentially could do? Because they've had deaths already in China, uh, and it's spread. And how much? And again, this is this is the Chinese giving us information. This is not. You know, I always take these things with a grain of salt because, you know, a lot of countries like this aren't as forthcoming as I know a lot of people think they would be. We have received reports from 13 provinces and municipalities with confirmed cases of 440. Death cases, nine. Yeah. Death cases, nine, 440. And we live in a modern world where it takes two seconds to get on an airplane and fly somewhere and be on the other side of the world. 
Right now, they've been doing screenings at three different airports throughout the United States. They're going to expand that to five as soon as they can. So that includes Atlanta as well. In addition to that, any person traveling from Wuhan, China, that wishes to enter the United States has to go through one of those five designated airports where they're doing screening. Yeah. So if you're flying here from a certain area and they're looking at, uh, you know, okay, you're flying here. Where where are you most likely to come into? So now you're going to be, even if you're flying into somewhere else, they're going to route you just to get in the country through these places, right? So you might have gone from, from this province to somewhere else. They're going to find out where you've gone. But along the way, too, now they're going to have to track everybody you've pretty much come in contact with. Because maybe, just maybe, you're sick and you don't know it. You're out there for three, four, five days, and then you start to come down with symptoms. And along the way, you've been in contact with... 100, 200 people, you know, whether it's work or a restaurant, and all of a sudden they start, you know, if this thing is that deadly, it's not that deadly. I don't think it's that deadly. Got to be honest with you. I don't think it is. I could be absolutely wrong. And remember how much, you know, the flu kills and stuff, but I, we, we freak out at SARS. We freaked out at, remember Ebola was like everywhere. We were joking around for three weeks i said look i'll give somebody a paycheck i'll give you one of my paychecks if you could go out and catch the ebola virus in the united states no one's not catching the ebola this is a little bit different but i don't think this is going to be the influenza outbreak of this century that's going to kill tens of millions 323-538-2423 at chad benson shows your twitter association mature american citizens they're called amac fastest growing over 50 organization in the country They're out there fighting on your behalf for things like, you know, hey, you've got certain values. You look at something like immigration. You can have empathy, but you don't want to be stupid. We want borders. We want stuff like you can't let anybody here who wants to come here with. No, we want common sense immigration form. They're also out there making sure that things like Social Security and uh, Medicare aren't impacted by bad policy. On top of that. Great benefits, retail, restaurant, hotel discounts, discounts for cheaper insurance, and they'll help you with questions. Maybe you've got questions about Medicare and Social Security. Call them. They'll help you. And right now, it's free to join. It's one year. It's free. It's on me. You go to amac.us forward slash chat. That's A-M-A-C dot U-S forward slash chat. Or call 888-355-1617, 888-355-1617. It's one year. It's free. It's on me. AMAC. Dot us forward slash Chad Chad Benson show. The Chad Benson show where the sensible center hangs out. Hey, you, that doesn't mean you can put your feet up on the table. You're despicable. This is Chad Benson. Did someone say KFC? I don't care. I love it. I don't care. I love it. <laughs> so that's the sound from a KFC Australia commercial. And you got these two young boys who are in a car. It's a beautiful woman. Buxom. And they're looking at and then the window rolls down. And she, Did somebody say KFC? And people are mad at that. That's a sexist commercial. And of course, KFC's had to come out and apologize. A lot of people are going, hey, come on now, just get over it. First of all, I'm going to explain it for everybody out there who doesn't understand. Let me tell you what young boys, old boys, young men, regular men, and old men think about. Women. Hmm. It's a joke. Let's get over yourself. People are upset. Oh, you're you're objectifying women. <sighs> Go on Instagram. Okay. Right? Go on Pinterest. Not as much anymore. Go on a lot of things. Is there objectification? Yes. But at the same time, so many people, in particular women, are putting things out there. And then they're like shocked. Oh, well, you know, you're, you're wearing a thong and that's it. And you turn around and you've got pouty lips and then people will say something and you're like, I can't believe I was objectified. 
Well, it, then, then don't take a picture like that. Well, like at some point in time, you start asking yourself, well, what's the purpose of the picture? Am I supposed to find you attractive or, is I, or am I not supposed to find you attractive? Is what's what, what's the that's the problem. Like, like to be a young man today, it's got to be so like I don't envy my son. I envy the fact that he's he's got a lot of things that in his favor that he's he's going, you know, to see so many amazing things in his lifetime uh, with technology and everything that. But with things like relationships, I, I do not envy any of that. Because, like, I just don't know anymore. I'm like, am I, am I supposed to think that's sexy? Are you trying to make it sexy? But then if somebody says something and then you're shocked, like, I'm confused. Right? Like, somebody needs to throw a flag. We need an explainer video, please. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. It is so funny. You just can't. Like, at this point in time, I, I don't even know what, like, what, or what, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to say something? You're not supposed to say something. Last night I was listening to it. Then I went home and saw it. And it was, uh, well, it was, it was ugly. His time expired in a lopsided Kansas win. Jayhawks big man Silvio DeSouza rejected a shot by Kansas State's Dewan Gordon. Then hovered over him. That's when Tepper's flared. Oh, this is bad. This is a no. At one point, DeSouza is seen picking up a stool and holding it above his head. This is terrible. Kansas coach Bill Self saying after the game he could level punishment against his players as soon as Wednesday. That was an embarrassment by on, 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 on our part for the role that we played in it. KU's athletic director apologized to Kansas State and others for the lack of sportsmanship. Yeah, lack of sportsmanship. Again, young men playing hard, battling all night. You're going to do some things that... And that's... Not, look... And kids emulate. My son, he he emulates. When I was a kid growing up, playing sports the way I did, you know, you would try to emulate your stars that you were just like, that person's amazing. I want to be like that guy. And and I see that. And last night it got ugly fast. You, do, you don't usually see that, but it was a rival. You got Kansas versus Kansas State. You know, one team got throttled. And, and you know, you're, you're, you just, it got ugly. It did. It did. Next thing you know, and listening to the listening to the local broadcast on on the Fox Sports thing that I had on and inside the the truck, it was like they were like, "Oh my god!" It was like, "Oh, it just they were screaming." You're like, "Oh my god, I got to see this." I'm like, it "Wasn't that bad?" Right? But now you see why they throw flags in certain situations because of the taunting, because they're afraid, especially with testosterone and young men, it can get out of hand easy. Hell, I play over 35 soccer. In the last two weeks, I've played two games, and there's been fights in both games. We have jobs. I'm 49. I'm coming out here to mostly get steps (laughs) and to have a good workout, not to fist fight somebody over a meaningless game. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. So what do you think? Will you show up at your trial any day? I'd love to go. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be beautiful? I don't know. I'd sort of love to sit right in the front row and stare at their corrupt faces. I'd love to do it. So why not? I don't know. Don't don't keep talking because I may you may convince me to do it. Do you think Simple Only would want you there? I think they might have a problem. I think they might. And by the way, I think I think they've I think they've done a really good job. And I think the other side has so lied. I watched the lies from Adam Schiff. He'll stand, he'll look at a microphone and he'll talk like he's so aggrieved. These two guys, these are major sleaze bags. Major sleaze bags. Major. Speaking of major sleaze bags, earlier today, Davos, Switzerland, World Economic Forum. All the muckety-mucks from around the globe get together, talk about global stuff. Trump was holding his court. Again, they asked him about Nadler. Gerald Nadler, I've known him a long time. He's a sleazebag. Everybody knows that. Everybody. Everybody knows that. It's 
like we all know. Like there's nothing about stuff that we don't know when it comes to sleaze, sleaze, sleaze sleazebag. Double, triple sleazebag. Everybody knows that. I'm like, does everybody really know that? I'm just letting you know. Everybody knows it. <laughs> oh, it's just... You know, George Conway was on earlier. I We talk. I don't know how that... Ha- I don't know what happens at the house. I don't know if there's a rule, like, you can't wear shoes in the house, and when you take your shoes off, everything that was politics with Kellyanne and George gets left out there at the doorway. But he talked about, you know, like, they, they were just, you know, I was listening to it, and you know, they were asking him, because you, 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 he's conservative, and you got a pack, and you can't stand Trump, and, you know, have you been ostracized? And, you know, it, he's pretty honest about it. You know, that's one of the things about Bolton, too. When I tell everybody about Bolton, remember this about Bolton. The Democrats want Bolton. They think he is going to be that some sort of bridge between the, you're not seeing it, to, oh, my God, now I see it, because I the, the bridge was Bolton between us, and I see Bolton lives in a world where he's conservative. He's got his own pack. He doesn't want to be ostracized, right? He still wants to be able to maneuver in those circles. It's tough for a single person to say, oh, I think this or I think that, right? It doesn't matter what side of the aisle. To stand out and say, oh, I think Trump is all of these things because the fear of repercussion is you're going to be ostracized, the base is going to turn against you, and you're going to lose your gig, and then what ends up happening? Everybody takes note of that. Do I think there are people in the Republican Party, a lot of them, who don't like Trump? And I'm not talking about the the average person who's going to work today. You know, I, I'm talking about people inside of the machine that don't like Trump. Oh, God, yeah. I also think there are people on the left, and I've talked to some of them who really like, ah, I, you know what, it's, this is what politics is nowadays. And did he do anything more egregious that, deserve, that deserves that some of the other presidents in the past have done? If you break it down, you could find something, you know, pretty much in every administration where you can go, hmm, we have issues with this. But here we are. And now we're going to have several days of we, we, we argued about the rules. Then we got to vote on the rules. And now the rules are here. And instead of two days to make your case, you guys are going to get three days. But it's still only going to be 24 hours because we like to sleep, apparently. And then from there, there's going to be 16 hours of the senators then asking questions. Right? Which means uber grandstand time. Like, they love grandstanding. They love it. As the House managers were making some of their stuff yesterday, as well as Trump's defense team, you know, it is it's soundbite after soundbite. So far, I'm sad to say I see a lot of senators voting for a cover up, voting to deny witnesses, an absolutely indefensible vote, obviously a treacherous vote against an honest consideration of the evidence of the, against the president, a vote against an honest trial. A vote against the United States. Right? So that was Nadler. Vote for a cover-up. Voting against the United States of America. You're basically killing everything that the United States is about. You're stomping upon the Constitution. Oh, rah, 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 rah. Pat Cipollone, White House Counsel. Mr. Nadler came up here and made false allegations against our team. He made false allegations against all of you. He accused you of a cover-up. He's been making false allegations against the president. The only one who should be embarrassed, Mr. Nadler, is you for the way you've addressed this body. Right, so that, 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 and that's what you get a lot of. Again, so then Chief Justice Roberts, who seems to be the only adult in the room, finally he's kind of had enough. I think it is appropriate at this point for me to admonish both the House managers and the President's counsel in equal terms to remember that they are addressing the world's greatest deliberative body. One reason it has earned that title is because its members avoid speaking in a manner and using language that is not conducive to civil discourse. You guys paying attention? Both of you guys are being clowns. You need to stop it. You need to act. Like grown-ups? You guys hear me? All right? 
you both you're, you're flinging mud at each other and that not in this house right not in this place not here in the 1905 Swain trial, a senator objected when one of the managers used the word pettifogging, and the presiding officer said the word ought not to have been used. I don't think we need to aspire to that highest standard, but I do think those ab- addressing the Senate should remember where they are. Pettifogging. You're like, what is pettifogging? It's not ground horde langhorging. It's not that. It's placing undue emphasis on petty details right on petty details and but that's like yesterday yesterday was it was i was thinking to myself i think i'd rather have the coronavirus than this it is that long of just drawn out in the weeds crap where and remember every time they crack the microphone every time they get up there Their point is, I'm not selling this to other senators. I know which senators are already voting which way. There may be a few surprises, but not enough that this president's going to be removed. I'm selling this to the American people because they're all watching. They're not all watching. I was at a TV station yesterday doing something, right, doing an interview. And we're like, it was on, and they're like, it's a ratings killer. It is. And how many people are paying attention to it? People are getting snapshots of stuff. They're hearing stuff on the radio or seeing something elsewhere, but they're not they're not going wall to wall. So you've got to make your sales point because you're trying to sell the American people. The American people made up their mind, right? They have. They've made up their mind on a lot of things. They've made up their mind on the likes of, of, of Trump. You know, a lot of this is about who Trump is. As a human being, right? That's what a lot of it is. They were talking to Iowa voters yesterday about Trump and whether or not he should or should be impeached. But listen to this. And this says so much of uh, of what this is about. Talks badly about deceased people, John McCain. He's, he's, He's just a disgusting person. He's a disgusting person. Okay, but what about all of his policies? Really? Like, what about his policies? He's a disgusting human being. Okay, that's fine. What about the policies of it all, though? That's, like, the policy side of it. We're not talking policy. We're talking about what a disgusting human being is. But you thought that already. He probably is not going to get impeached just because he has, like, seems like he has really strong lawyers on his side. But my, my hope is he does. <laughs> he is impeached, for those of you. That's the other thing. You're asking somebody. Well, he's probably not going to. No, he is impeached. It's happened. He's impeached. Now, removal is where we're at. He's already been impeached. But the disgusting human being was the perfect thing right there. Because so many people just... When I talk to people and I say, well, tell me the policy. Well, the policy is people in cages. Okay. But, you know, Obama did that. Right. Like Obama, did he do it the way that Trump did it? No. But those cages, some of those things were built well before Trump ever got there. Is it right? Is it wrong? No, it, it, it wasn't right. It was a mistake. Right. But there's also laws in place as far as how long you can keep somebody and all of those things. So but but tell me the other things that you dislike about, him, like the other policy moves. And that you get a lot of, well, he's just a vile person. Tell me some other stuff, though. Well, I don't like the, I don't like the tax cut. I mean, you can blame all the Republicans on that. I think it went a little bit too far. There was things that I would have liked to seen, but tell me some other stuff. And it's it's a lot of people, you know, they they struggle, and, and that's that way of both sides too. When you ask questions, you know, about like what what about Obama you didn't like? What about this? They they don't because a lot of times it's so emotional. It's based on the person because we don't get into the minutia of it all. But that's a perfect thing. He's a disgusting human being. I'm like, well, there you go. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. My pillow, baby. My buddy yesterday goes, how good are the my pillows? I said, well, first of all, they're insanely good. He goes, because I know people that have them. And he goes, you know, they, they, they love them. He goes, and I said, well, 
take it from them. Don't take it from me. I mean, but yeah, take it from me. And I and I continue to tell everybody, like they've got new towels that are incredible and they're just amazing. And I love them. And I got I got five different colors, right? And they're designer colors. They sent me some. And uh, you know, I'm like, I'm a kind of a snob for towels. Like I like, you know, I, I use a couple towels and I want to make it a lot of times they're just ugh, they're crap. These are amazing. Super absorbent, extra soft. Just amazing. Made in the USA. No cheap fillers or, or cheap softeners. And you get a 60 day money back guarantee. And they're big and they're just soft. They're incredible. It's a super luxury feel. But everything they do is amazing. And I continue to go back to, to their mattress topper, which is the most amazing thing to me that they have for me in my sleep. Like the, the pillows were amazing and the mattress topper is, oh, but these right here, incredible. Now's your chance. Save big. Go to MyPillow.com, click on the new radio listener special. You're going to get 30% off amazing towels. 30% off. 60-day money-back guarantee. Enter promo code Benson. It's MyPillow.com, new radio listener special. The promo code is Benson. You'll save 30% off. You have a 60-day money-back guarantee. Or call 800-983-4975. Use the promo code Benson. Chad Benson Show. No snowflake zone. Uninformed opinions are in danger of melting. The Chad Benson Show. The trial of Harvey Weinstein is set to expose the underbelly of Hollywood and its confluence of money, fame, and sex. Defense attorney Donna Rotuno has made no secret of her strategy to portray Weinstein's accusers as participants willing to trade themselves for advancement. Did they feel intimidated or were they more concerned about what could potentially happen to them? And were they willing to play a game that they then decided they weren't willing to play? Attorneys for the women have likened the defense argument to victim shaming. Six women are expected to testify. Yeah. I mean, is it victim? Well, the, as you're not shaming them. You're asking them a question, right? Like, we do have victim shaming, but you're talking about a man that potentially could face a very long time, if not forever, in prison. He's got a defense. Your defense team is going to go out there, and they're going to fight. But they're going to ask, they're going to introduce a bunch of evidence uh, that, you know, shows emails and text messages that that showed a different side of things. Right. I mean, there's a lot of issues here and Harvey's going to have his day in court, as are these women. And then the jurors will decide the fate of him. It's you would expect that from a team. Is it victim shaming? If you said, hey, you know, you said he did all of these things to you. But we've got. 20 emails that say something different, that you had a relationship with them in different ways. We've got several text messages and, you know, all of these things. What changed? What ended up happening? There's no doubt that this guy used the, the, the casting couch in a lot of ways that was vile and horrible. And I, I think, based on what we've seen out there, that he is going to be found guilty. This is just me, right, playing, you know, armchair juror but you would want a defense to do defense work right it's like people are mad at like they like like when epstein all this stuff went down and, and when they announced that you know alan dershowitz was going to be on the team people were like oh he's a pedophile i'm like well is he a proven pedophile well no but he wrote on the plane and he did you know and you start pointing out that that's you know well, he defended that guy. Well, in this country, we have a right for a defense, right? Should you, do you think we should take people out and just shoot them? Is that what you think? Or that they shouldn't be allowed to defend themselves? And that you should just be able to pass? Are we going to be Judge Dredd? We're going to have AI robots just rolling around? And right there, they're going to sentence you to whatever the sentence could be, right? You could have to pay a fine on the spot, or you could be eliminated. Mm, never thought of that. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. Oh, Trump doing what Trump does. Apparently, talked to his legal team last night about impeachment, and of course, he had uh, you know was just doing his thing, man. I mean, he's just out there, and it, yeah, it it it's it, it's ugly. It is the whole thing in itself is 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 ugly for America. It's great that we have a system that can protect us from. The bad eggs, but 
we also now have a, a country that has changed in such a way where we're so divided that we can't even see, okay, this is the roadmap that was set out there. Are we using it correctly? And then Trump, of course, does what Trump does. It's a disgrace. They talked about their tremendous case, and it's all done, their tremendous case. They had no case. It's all a hoax. All a hoax. Everything's a hoax. Fake news, all a hoax, super fake news, double hoax. He's the most guilty man of all time. The jury that that matters is the American people, not what these people do. Because if we get to the point where we say we've had enough or this is ridiculous, they'll see that. Right? They will see that. Right now, the bipartisan says more about us than it does them. Because at the end of the day, they're going to do whatever the people want because the people have the power to vote them out and they like keeping their jobs. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Speaking of power, a little AOC for you. She's interesting. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Just over half of Americans say they believe the Senate should vote to convict and remove President Trump from office. Take a look at this. According to the latest CNN SSRS poll, 51% believe Trump should be convicted and removed from office by the Senate. 45% say he should not. 69% say that the Senate impeachment trial should include testimony from new witnesses. Ooh. Really? Meek. So CNN's poll had CNN's poll had that CNN. No way. CNN. It's like go to a Fox poll. No way. Fox said he shouldn't be (laughs) just so stupid. Here's the thing. Let me tell you what sells in life. Drama, sex, things that you can. There's an emotion tied to it. Right. A rational voice. In a storm of chaos. Isn't really going to have anybody paying attention to it because everybody else is too busy going, look at the chaos and and freaking out. We're the exhausted majority. I say that all the time. Seventy percent of Americans, they lean a little bit right, a little bit left, but they're not insane. That 15 percent, though. Seven and a half on each side. Have the bully pulpit. They scream and they yell. And the problem is, is 60% of that 70% will turn and look. Oh. Because it's the great car accident, right? It's the whiplash. Got to look and see what's going on over there. Because it, it does. Look, I, I can come on and scream all day about insanity. You know, we can say, oh, oh my God, it's, it's, it doesn't do anything, right? And the problem with us is we need more parties than we have right now. That's the other thing. We've got parties within parties, except for the fact that we can only vote really for two parties, right? So inside of the Republican Party, you have conservatives, right? You have moderates and certain libertarians on the other side you have moderates some more libertarians old school democrats and then progressives right the socialist side but at the end of the day bernie's not running as an independent even though he's an independent he runs as a democrat how How do we bring it together? That's just it. We're never going to bring everybody together because no matter what happens, you're going to have people out there that are going to be on the extremes that will always get 
all of the time they need. Because television, radio, and magazines, that's what sells. Right? Somebody coming out going, look, you know what? We're not going to get everything we need and want. We're going to have to give some stuff up. Right? We're going to have to, and, and, and no matter what we do, it's not going to make everybody happy. And some people are going to feel left out and some people are going to feel, I mean, it doesn't matter. Right? But you do have a problem in both parties right now, which is this huge gap that is, 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 is starting to pull the parties away from themselves inside. So you're seeing regular Democrats get pulled away to the centrist like area and it's like oh you're a moderate why because you're pro choice and you're and and you're good with marriage equality but because you're not for crazy marxism and free jobs and free everything somehow that you're no longer a good you know soldier in the democratic army and on the other side right republicans you you, you could be fine with marriage equality and okay with uh, with with you know legalizing marijuana but because of that you're not a good person anymore and it, it's it's stupid it is but you do have a problem and right now here's a perfect example of how this whole thing differs right this is aoc who's campaigning with bernie you listen to this and i will tell you this for as as a, as a person who lived through the cold war as a person who got to see up close and personal what the Eastern Bloc look like, having played games in East Germany when I was a kid. East Germany, because there was a West Germany. And this is straight crazy. Like, uh, what are you talking about? Right? Like, this, this is what you really think? This is not to say that charity is wrong. Right. But also it's important in who we give to. Mm -hmm. If you're a billionaire and you want to do good, then I think what you need to do is, first of all, change your business model. If Jeff Bezos wants to be a good person, he turned Amazon to a worker cooperative. You know, Mm -hmm. like, not what do I do with all of this money that I have created with this unjust system? A worker cooperative? Right? Are you kidding me? Like, that's what he should do? That, that's it? Oh, it's not done. Usually if you're a billionaire, that means that you control a massive system. Mm. It means that you own oil supplies. Mm. It means that you control textiles. Mm. It means that you have a mm. massive labor force under your control. And to be ethical, if you're a billionaire today, the thing that you need to do is give up control mm. and power. So I don't want your money as much as we want your power. Mm. The people, not me. No, you. Everybody who, and this is the funny thing, and I always talk about this when it comes to socialism. When people say out there, oh, you guys are crazy when you talk about socialism and there's nobody out there that's really like that. Bernie's not like that. AOS, they're like that. They would love that. They would. They would love the kind of power that Maduro has, but more importantly, that Hugo Chavez has, because they believe they can do it better. They believe they can do it better. Everybody believes, but everybody who wants that kind of power never wants to live under that kind of power. It was always designed for pe- by people who want to control the power. They have power, too. That's why in the world of politics, money seeks out power and power seeks out money. Right? That's that's what happens. But a cooperative? I mean, some of this stuff, and she's just getting started, kids. I'm Joe Billionaire. I made widgets. I sold those widgets. I made mm-hmm. billions of dollars, you know, yeah. selling those widgets, making those widgets. Therefore, those billions of dollars are right. mine. Why am I the enemy? Well, you didn't make those widgets, did you? Mm. Because you employed mm. thousands of people and paid mm. them less than a living wage mm. to make those widgets for mm. you. You didn't make those widgets. Mm. You sat on a couch while thousands of people were paid modern day slave wages, and in some cases, real slave, real modern day slavery. Are you kidding me? You didn't make those? You didn't take the risk? That's what people don't understand. People like her have never been in the real. The real world, right? Like, you know, she was a bartender for a little while. She went to school. And guess what, though? Go look at Bloomberg, right? 
You, we, everybody points to, oh, Trump's a bit. Go look at Bloomberg. Look what he started with. Look how he started. Look where he, oh, but he didn't make anything. He never did. You're right. He came up with an idea, and then he went to a couch, and he sat down, and magically, people appeared. Magically, people showed up. Magically. That happened. And along the way, he enslaved them. Not employed them, enslaved them. Made that money off, off the backs of undocumented people. Mm-hmm. You made that money off of the backs of um, black and brown people being paid under a living wage. You made that money off of the backs of single mothers. And all of these people who are literally dying mm-hmm. because they can't afford to live. Mm-hmm. And so no one ever makes a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. You take a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. And they soak it up. Oh, yeah, you're right. They're just stealing. That's all they're doing. They're stealing. They're stealing. That's it. No, government takes, right? If you make a widget and your widget sucks, it doesn't sell. You lose your money. You go out of business. If you make a widget and it does well, you employ people. And along the way from employing people, well, it's all slave labor, Chad. And it's all, and people are dying because you're slave. No, no, this is not. They're not the De Beers family out there, right? Mining, uh, you know, blood diamonds. never going to be good enough but government takes right government takes when's the last time you went to your paycheck and saw the part where no taxes were taken out no they take them out do you give it to them voluntarily no they take them out i love when they talk about revenue this is this is i'm telling you guys that's the stuff when people say it's not you listen to that and tell me how this doesn't sound insane and Marxist. And I'm not here to, to villainize and to say billionaires are inherently morally mm. corrupt, but they are. <laughs> Some <laughs> disagree with me, clearly. <laughs> it's, not, it's not to say that. It's to say that this system that we live in, life in capitalism, right. always ends in billionaires. And uh, that's why we have to fight for an advanced society. And, you know, for that, I am called a radical. I am called this every name in the book. No, you're called that because you're out there saying, well, you know, billionaires should give up everything, that they sit at home and do nothing. And by the way, it's not just after a while, billionaires won't be enough. The millionaires, right? And the millionaires are the people who, you know what, they made some decent money, quarter of a million dollars a year, worked their butts off 60, 70 hours a week, building up a small business, put money away, did okay for themselves. And all of a sudden, they're going to be the villains because along the way, because they're going to run out. And everybody is a victim. Everybody is a victim because there will always be more victims than victors. And that is an issue. That is a huge issue. Tell me right there. I'm not talking about the Joe Bidens of the world, right? The Bloombergs, the Pete Buttigieg. I'm talking about the people that see things and they don't want to change the system. They want to burn the system down and do something different. And guess what? It is growing out there. Well, maybe it's a good thing. Really? Show me where it's worked. Well, sweet. Sweden's not. Scandinavian model is not the model you think it is. They tried that model, by the way, and they lost everything. And then they're like, nope, can't do this. Show me. Show me. I'm waiting. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. Car Shield. Love Car Shield. Why? Because I don't have to use it, but I have it. Haven't had to use it yet. I'm assuming at some point in time I'm going to have to use it. I've used it on my other car that I don't have anymore. And, man, the car show come through with me. You get 24-7 roadside assistance, a rental car for free while your car's in the shop, and the shop is the shop that you choose. They get them paid directly, so you don't have to front them any cash or anything. So maybe your car's a little newer, right? I was talking to my buddy yesterday. He, he bought his car newer, but he paid cash for it, so there was no warranty or anything that came with it. And he was like, ah, you know, I said, dude, get car shield. Trust me. Ask, ask my buddy Lloyd. He didn't get it. I jo- I just you should get it. He said, no, 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 no. Literally within a month, month and a half later, it's car. Pfft. I said, with Car Shield, they covered that, man. It would cost you nothing but your deductible. They'll take care of whatever it is you need. Maybe your car's newer, you got electronic stuff in there, you want to make sure that's taken care of. Maybe you want everything taken care of. Doesn't matter. Whether your car's got 5,000, 150,000 miles on it, Car Shield is there for you right now. 
you're going to save 10%. You go to carshield.com, carshield.com, use code Benson, or better yet, call them at 800-CAR-6000, 800-CAR-6000. When you do that, use my code Benson. Ask them all the questions you need about the plan that's right for you and the card that you have. 800-CAR-6000, code Benson, a deductible may apply. Chad Benson Show. Deal this. Mueller, arrest me. Chad will trade you two perjury charges for one collusion and throw in a reduced charge of obstruction for free. Yeah, I'd do that. For just listening to The Chad Benson Show. <sighs> what does it mean to be fub? Fubbing is the combination of phone and snubbing. Oh. It means you're snubbing someone by looking at your phone instead of paying attention to them. You've done it, I've done it, we've all done it, and it's really annoying. This guy's doing it to me right now. So the trouble with fubbing is that it's kind of a vicious cycle. If you're at a restaurant with someone and you realize they're not listening to you because they're scrolling through their Instagram looking at strangers' dogs, you don't really want to be like, hey, are you listening to me? That would be sad and awkward. So instead, you probably just take out your phone, too. (laughs) It's a dog on Instagram. Ah, look at that. Yeah, that's what happens. Fubbing's real, and now they're saying psychologically it could be hurting children. Because children are seeing their parents put the phone above them. What? Yeah. Yeah. That's what's happening, kids. Putting the phone above them. Not a shocker. Right? Everybody does that nowadays. Do you think the phone has hubbing where they're going, hey, you're paying attention to a human more than you're paying attention to me? But the reality is, is look, our phones, we, we, we have a relationship with our phones that's bizarre. Remember, these things were designed and built in a way that it would become addictive. Do I think that it is? Because what they're saying is it increased the risk of depression, according to a new study. So they looked at 530 students in China. And they, they essentially started breaking things down. And what researchers were, were, were finding that is these kids who felt that they were second best to the phone or to whatever else was going on out there struggled with depression later in childhood and adolescence. I don't know if that's true. Because think about this. I mean, look, is it look, we, we all do it, though, right? Like that's that's we're all guilty of it. I'm guilty of it. Not being present in the moment, whether it's with your child or with other people and other people are guilty of it as well towards one another. Right. But we have now gotten to the point we have less sleep. That is very real. And we have a relationship with our phone. In many cases, occasions over our partners and our friends and our family. So that's that's weird. But that's very real. I, I, I continue to say the Gen X generation, my generation, I feel has the best of both worlds. We're able to talk to human beings in a way that the younger generations don't get, but we're also able to enjoy technology that the older generations don't really get. So it's interesting. So are you fubbing? Don't fub to me. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. Speaking of fubbing, how about Rayconning? Best earbuds around, right? Amazing. About a quarter to half the price of all these other earphones around. Ray J's put it together where he's put together the absolute best. The E25s are amazing. Six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, compact design, so an amazing noise-isolating fit. On the go, working out, listening to music or audiobook, you're going to get the best of the best of the best. No wires, no stems. He took them to people who understand music and sound, like Snoop Dogg and Cardi B. They became obsessed with them. You will as well. Get yours now. Save big. You're going to love these. Go to buyraycon.com slash chad. You're going to save 15% on top of all of the amazing savings already. Buyraycon.com slash chad. Buyraycon.com slash chad. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. Keep following along. Have a great, blessed, wonderful day. We got you over the hop. Night, night, Jack.
This is the Chad Benson Show.